Although the United States is one of the wealthiest countries in the world, there are still many people living in poverty. People on the left generally argue that government should help these people with so-called means-tested programs, such as entitlements, that redistribute wealth from the haves to the have-nots. And they claim that people who oppose such policies are heartless and uncompassionate toward the poor. My name is Hadley Heath from the Independent Women's Forum, and I'm narrating this Economics 101 video for the Center for Freedom and Prosperity to explain the alternative view. I will show how big government policies hurt the people they are intended to help, and I hope to demonstrate why free market capitalism is the most compassionate economic policy approach to empower people at the bottom of the socioeconomic scale. My argument is simple. In the real world, social welfare programs create a perverse incentive structure and leave out the most important aspect of getting out of poverty, which is economic freedom and opportunity. Let's examine the problem of poverty and its potential solutions with four questions. First of all, who are the poor? In too many cases, people are born into poverty and become part of a multi-generational pattern of dependency. Other Americans enter poverty later in life. The top reasons that someone goes onto welfare in the United States are divorce, followed by having a child out of wedlock. Interestingly, reduced wages or the loss of a job are not that high on the list. Secondly, what is poverty? Technically, poverty is defined by federal bureaucrats based on a formula. The chart on the screen shows the various cutoff levels for different household sizes. And to give you some perspective, here are some data on historical living standards. As you can see, poor people today would be considered middle class or above at various points in US history. And here are some figures on per capita GDP in various nations around the world. Sort of explains why some people say that much of the world would be delighted to live at US poverty levels. This is not to diminish the hardship and anxiety felt by poor households, but poverty in the United States very rarely means material deprivation. As Robert Rector of the Heritage Foundation has documented, poor people today have access to consumer goods that used to be considered luxuries. Heck, the average poor person in America has more living space than the average European. Thirdly, what drives poverty? America's poor may have adequate living standards based on historical comparisons and cross-country comparisons, but our goal should be much higher than adequacy. And this is why we should be looking at the negative impact of government. There are lots of issues we could cover, such as minimum wage and unemployment insurance, but let's focus on what really matters in this debate. The huge array of means-tested programs and the record amounts of money that are being redistributed for the supposed benefit of lower income Americans. As you peruse the information on the screen, it certainly should be apparent that politicians have been throwing money at the problem. But is it working? Well, let's consider the poverty rate, which was falling steadily in the United States in the 1950s and 60s. But then the war on poverty began, and poverty rates stagnated. Why? The most logical answer is that government started subsidizing poverty. The safety net became a hammock. Many poor people don't want to live in dependency, of course, but the welfare state is sort of like flypaper, making it hard for people to climb the ladder. Low-income Americans face some of the highest implicit marginal tax rates of any group in society, because earning more money would result not only in higher taxes, but also in the loss of government handouts. The welfare reforms of the mid-1990s, which actually scaled back the welfare state and decentralized certain handouts, did move policy a bit in the right direction. Millions of people exited welfare and found jobs in the productive sector of the economy. Unfortunately, poverty rates are on the rise again. During President Obama's first years in office, the number of people in poverty increased to a record high level. During the same time period, government spending on welfare has increased dramatically. In his fiscal year 2011 budget, Obama requested $953 billion to spend on welfare a 42% increase over welfare spending in the last full year of the Bush administration. Sadly, the friendly sounding idea of spreading the wealth really only serves to discourage people from creating the wealth. This brings us to the fourth and final question, what can fix poverty? Sadly, poverty in the United States has become a vicious cycle. Generations of families have suffered from not just physical poverty, but a poverty of spirit that discourages them from working hard toward changing their own lives. 
But even the spiritual poverty is supported and not solved by government handouts. Wait, though, there is hope for breaking this cycle. As the economist Milton Friedman said, there has never in history been a more effective machine for eliminating poverty than the free enterprise system and the free market. What makes America so great, and what makes America a relatively good place to be a poor person, is not our long list of federal means-tested welfare programs. What makes America great is our historical appreciation for the economic liberty of all people. But we've been drifting in the wrong direction, and it's time to restore economic freedom and liberate people. Government should maintain a rule of law, keep us and our property safe, keep our currency stable, allow us to trade, and allow us to do business with others without overly burdensome taxes or regulations. By reducing the role of government in wealth redistribution and hopefully eliminating any federal government involvement whatsoever, we can enable more Americans to exit poverty and live self-reliant lives of dignity and self-worth. I'm Hadley Heath from the Independent Women's Forum. I hope that you'll agree with me and that you'll share this Center for Freedom and Prosperity video with others.